What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tank, bringing it to you on a Tanker Tuesday. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, I got a fun one for you, folks. Have you ever wondered why certain species of tetra are readily available all over the place in the hobby, but then some of them are really hard to find and you can hardly ever get? Take the Peruvian bloodfin tetra versus the regular bloodfin tetra. Bloodfin tetras are all over the place. Peruvian bloodfins, not so much. In today's video, we're going back to the Amazon to talk about species variation in the wild okay so like yesterday's video today's video starts out in the jungle but first a quick note on yesterday's video shout out to everybody who dropped me a comment on the German blue Rams and who is successfully keeping them in a pH above seven obviously a captive bread fish is going to be more readily available to take a higher pH uh, I still think the keeping Rams above seven is kind of running the risk but if you're doing it by all means congratulations and if you didn't catch that video hit the subscribe button notification button I do daily videos blah 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 and you'll get notified helps me helps you the whole thing by the way on the Rams front I did get called out by our boys down at Imperial Tropicals my man Jacob said come on son you know where you can get the those captive bred rams that will handle a higher pH. So hey Jacob, I'm calling you out dude, where are my rams at? Not in the jungle. Okay, so this story starts like most good stories back in the jungle. This story starts the first time I went to Peru back in 2012. Note this was in the suit and tie wrap that's cleaner than a bar of soap, Dustin's Fish Tanks era. Uh, when I was selling voice over IP phones and I would have loved to have seen the look on my customer's face when my autoresponder said, thank you for your email. I'll be in the jungle of Peru with nothing but a loincloth and a spear catching fish. I'll return your email when I get back, if I come back. Okay. So the first time that I go to Peru, I go on a river called the Nanai River. The second time I was on the Napo River. First time is Nanai. Now, I'm making this statement because everybody uses the term Amazon as a blanket statement, but the reality of it is the Amazon River is so big, so massive, and so full of so many different tributaries and tributaries and subtributaries that it's important to note just the exact river that I am on with this. I'm on the Nanai River. And I want to uh, make a quick personal note here. The first time I went to Peru, I was there with a man named David Schlesser. Uh, David Schlesser was a dentist by trade, but gave that all up to pursue his love with aquarium fish. He actually uh, collected ranchus and he uh, wrote a book on piranhas. And I was there with him. And you can imagine just like me sitting on the back of the boat in the Amazon with a man with this much knowledge. Uh, just a super great dude. Was a curator of the Dallas-Fort Worth Aquarium uh, for a long time. I don't know if he's even still alive. And if you do know the word, about to David Schlesser. Uh, please don't tell him Dustin says hello. Last I heard he wasn't doing so well. So David Schlesser, you're the man and all the old school people uh, dropping knowledge like that on a guy like me in Peru was truly an epic time. We're on the Nanai River and I'm pointing out and emphasizing the Nanai River not only because it's a cool word to say but because the Nanai River has a lower pH and a lower pH not only means a great variety of different species than you would get on different tributaries of the Amazon like the Napo River which I went on the second time but also for all of you wusses and for any of you thinking on going a trip with our friends at Margarita Tours and Mr. Devin Graham, Senor Devin as he is called, I recommend the Nanai River if you're a wuss and are afraid of mosquitoes. The lower pH means no mosquitoes. The Napo River not so much. Mosquito heaven, Nanai River collecting fish all day long. We're on the Nanai River. You can click the links around here and check out links to all the old school videos I loaded when I was on the Nanai River. But we're on the Nanai River collecting fish all day. And we decide that night we're going to take the, Nanai bo the boat up the Nanai River further upstream and we're going to park it. And they park it, the crew does, right along this obscure random spot on the edge of the river up against the forest. The night along the forest on the Nanai River was like nothing I had ever experienced before. Nothing any of us gringos had probably ever heard before. You see, we pulled our boat right up against the edge of a giant forest. And I'm sitting there at night and all that's connecting me to the forest is a giant rope and I'm on the boat in the water. And I'm glad to be on the boat in the water because I gotta tell you, at nighttime, I'm hearing some of the craziest, wildest sounds I've ever heard in my entire life and never heard before. So I'm actually comforted by the fact that I'm sitting on a boat with the door that closes and there are no mosquitoes and yada yada because what's going on in there is madness. That night I went to bed early like I always do because that following morning we were gonna hop on an obscure path that was gonna take us to a lake off of the edge of the Nanai River. And let me share with you this one thing. If you can take away one thing from over the thousand YouTube videos that I've done about fish tanks, 
let it be this. Nothing in the world compares to waking up on a boat in the Amazon rainforest. Nothing compares to it. The look of the sky, the look of the water as steam rises up off of the water, the sound of some crazy birds that you've never heard before in your life, the smell that hits you, your hand feeling the dew on the handrail as you drink a cup of coffee and soak in just pure mother nature bliss. Nothing in the world compares to it. It is sacred and I hope every single one of you at some point in your life takes the opportunity, don't wait for the opportunity, takes the opportunity and goes down and sees this with your own two eyes. Videos don't do it justice. But on this fine morning, folks, there's no time to wait. Dustin's in a virgin lake territory in a lake on the Nanaya River that I'm probably never going to see again. Down goes the coffee and off runs Dustin into the woods to go check out a lake with the crew. We're going to use a massive sanding net to pull up fish that I've never seen before. Can you tell I like the Amazon? Now let's get back to reality for a second here. Let's pull this back into our fish tanks. You see in hindsight when I look at this, it makes the species variation that we see in the Amazon and in our own aquarium hobby abundantly clear. Think about this for a second. You have this one lake that is probably 300 yards removed from the main channel. Now this lake over time can evolve and the species in there are not interacting with all the species going on in the main canal. This water parameters could change, you could see something different evolve, you could see a certain species over a long period of time, or maybe not even that long of a period of time, that species will develop into its own unique little blend right there in that tiny little lake. Now, that's one little tiny lake that I got to experience. There's thousands of them. There's thousands of them. This is happening all over the entire Amazon River Basin. And I want you to think about something for a second here. And I talked with David Schlesser about this and I gave him a shout out earlier in this video. And the simple thought is this. What if our favorite species, take the Neon Tetra. What if the Neon Tetra was actually just from one tiny little lake and developed there and that was where the cool blue, white, and red strand of Tetra developed. And then of course we took that Tetra and now it's readily bred in captivity and what have you. But think about that. Just one tiny little area, one tiny little pocket, those fish are removed from there and then bred in captivity. The neon Tetras might not even be all around the area. Isn't that crazy to think about? And when I think about it, I experienced this exact same thing when I was down in the Napo River with Mike Barber. We rolled probably 300 yards offshore. Donde esta Agua Negro? Yeah, my Spanish is terrible. And what happens? They take us to the black water in the back where I watch Mike pull up 11 marbled hatchet fish. These fish are in a pocket of their own. They live in their own tiny little lake way off of the main path and then can develop their unique color patterns and variations all on their own in isolation. Darwin at its best. Look, I called this Tetra Tuesday because I'm thinking about Tetras and the variation with Tetras, but this applies to so many different species that we know and love and stare at in our tanks. So do me a favor, folks. Pick your species, look in your tanks or a fish you might have kept in the past, and drop me a comment on what you think about where that fish was from. Maybe it's from some obscure lake that slowly evolved over thousands of years and that's why it's got such a funky style to it. Or maybe it's been captive bred and slowly strands have been developed to give it some long fins or red eyes or whatever the heck it is. Everybody have a fabulous freaking week. Hit the subscribe and notification button. Talk to you manana and tank on. I miss you, Mother Nature. Later!